Wednesday. All right. Well, good morning to you. It is uh, it is indeed uh, Thursday with Ramona. Wow. And it would seem like, can we even call it that anymore? We've, we've had so many interruptions over the weeks. And um, uh, I guess it was just last week. I mean, time is... Was it last week or the week before? No, last week I had La an Last appointment. week you had an appointment, <laughs> yeah. and uh, week before last, storms rolled through, Storm. and they wiped us out. And so, uh, so we're we're still trying to do all all that we can. Uh, and of course, we've been preaching out of John and, and talking about this. And I'm convinced um, more than ever that um, that we certainly need to be contemplating what God has for us out of the book of John. I was telling Ramona before we got started here that uh, reading another book, and I mentioned last night to you in my book club, club update, that um, we are, uh, I'm reading N.T. Wright's book, Broken Signposts, and it's basically the scripture references he goes through these these broken signposts are uh, all from the book of John. And so it just, it's a reminder that the book of John has got a lot of good stuff in it for us. And, and like we said, if you're just not joining in or watching this series, uh, we are doing our best to walk through. Uh, we are a bit confused as to where we're even at. Uh, I, I guess we might have the skill set to, to go back and, and figure that out. But uh, uh, we're going to we're gonna kind of re reset. I don't even want to say reset, but we're going to try to uh, anchor ourselves. Uh, Ramona thinks we're in chapter three, <laughs> yeah. and I also think, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull Ramona up so you can bring greetings and we'll get started on this. Uh, let's see if we got this right here. Ah, there we go. There's Ramona. She's on screen with us. Okay. Um, so good morning. Say, bring greetings to our folks and, and, uh, and we'll start off with a conversation about okay, where we right. think we're at in John and maybe some of your members exactly where we're at. I think we're at verse 22, but I could be completely no, wrong. No, you're correct. Um, that's where we started a couple of weeks ago. Before the storm cut us off 15 minutes later. So you had just read the scriptures <clears throat> to the end of the chapter mm -hmm. and asked for my comments. <laughs> and I opened my mouth and everything went boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> so that's where we're at. <laughs> We've been crawling through John. Hey, good, mor good morning, Karen. Karen, uh, Karen Harris joining in with us for this. Hey, Karen. this uh, uh, Thursday's fiasco with Ramona is kind of how we're, we're hoping nothing happens and we, we get through this. Um, yeah. yeah, and it was, you know, Ramona thought it was her that dropped off, and that was the Thursday that we lost at our house. Our phones, our cell phones quit working, um, the cable went out, everything but the power, and it took me about six hours to realize I actually had an old radio that we could actually listen to the weather updates and not just, you know, continue to try to stay hid, but uh, mm -hmm. anyway, we're, we're glad on here. Um, and there's Stan with the praise report. Joy had successful eye surgery. Oh, That's great, very good. Great, you know, we were, had an update. Prayed for her last night uh, during our Wednesday service. A lot of prayer requests last night uh, during that service. Um, a lot of folks need a, need a prayer, and uh, and we're glad to do that. If we ever grow weary of praying and interceding on one another, lifting one another up to the body of Christ, we've kind of missed out on one of the great joys of being part of the body of Christ, knowing that you're prayed for uh, continually, and that kind of helps no matter what the situation. Uh, is it, it helps to know that we're not alone in in these things, and a lot of times I realize that uh, me on my own, I'm I'm pretty useless. Um, but the person I pray to, not useless. Right. <laughs> I mean that is uh, in in you know, hey, my I will always pray, and uh, even when I'm trying to do it, uh, uh, it's never on my own strength around here. It's always with God's help. So uh, hopefully, He's going to make me better and better each and every day. But hey, here we go. So we're in John. Now, I, I am going to read the scripture again. Yeah. And uh, we're going to read from verse 22, chapter 3, verse 22, on down through the uh, the end of the chapter. And uh, again, we're going to then get Ramona's thoughts on this. And I'm going to come back in and, and weigh some things. Hey, uh, good morning, Sister D. Good yeah. morning. Never good to fails. See you. Yeah, never fails. There she is. So good morning to y'all. Hopefully you're having a, a good <laughs> beginning to your day. Again, we got more weather rolling in tonight, tomorrow, those kind of things. Rain, clouds are up in the air. And, uh, and so I guess clouds are always up in the air. That's, that's, just ignore me. Um, been, a, been, a, been a wonderful morning. I had a giant spider scare me this morning. And so I've got, you know, still haven't calmed down. I had a mouse um, in my house that I oh, had to get rid of. Oh, and wow. I, I, I was, I'm scared of them, but I, I got yeah, them. You took care of it? Yeah. You, you did, didn't have your helper with you, did you? Uh, but... <laughs> It was just a little mouse. Yeah. So, but if there had been a big, I'd have been calling you yeah. or somebody else because yeah. I can't deal with that. Hey, good morning, Danny, Sander. Good morning to y'all. Glad you're dropping in. We're going to talk about John chapter 3, verses 22 uh, down to the end of the chapter. And remember, uh, hey, here's uh, Karen. I uh, had a physical touch on the Lord Sunday morning, giving him all the praise. Oh, thank you. I, hopefully your family shared with me some of their comical things they were saying Sunday. But it was such a beautiful day. 
It was, oh, it was a beautiful day. And I know that uh, Karen's about to get to mark another one down on her calendar. Uh, she's about to have another uh, uh, granddaughter uh, be baptized. Really? And so uh, I just know wow. that, uh, yeah, God is so good to us. And, and I yeah. rejoice right along with, with, uh, with Karen. And uh, again, just uh, she's been so special to us over the years. And so we, um, to our family, to our boys, but we're rejoicing with that as uh, little Charlie yes. let uh, niece know that she is uh, uh, desiring to be baptized. And so Wonderful. we're getting that lined up here just Great. as uh, uh, as quick as they give me the word, we always got water to put in the baptistry. So, uh, so that's going to be a wonderful yeah. day. But uh, again, praise God for all these things. He is faithful to us. Uh, but anyway, we're going through John chapter three, going to read verses 22. I'm trying to read it for, uh, with the, the fresh eyes, if you will. And Ramona's going to help us keep it in our historical, uh, Christian <laughs> biblical context, right. helping us with some background. And, uh, and I may ask some questions. So here we go. Uh, John chapter 3, beginning in verse 22, reading from the New King James Version. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea, and there he remained with them and baptized. Now John also was baptizing in Anon near Salem, uh, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. For John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi... He who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friends of the bridegroom who stand the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Mm -hmm. Verse 31, he who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testifies, and no one receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony is certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not give the spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. <clears throat> wow, so there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, so there we go. Yeah, absolutely. Karen, Karen says that's, that's all four of her grand, grandkids now. Blessed Mima. Absolutely. Uh, we continue to talk about generational blessings if we're yeah. faithful and, and we did, praise God to be able to see that. Uh, and I, I just, I hope everyone uh, gets to experience those things. All right, so here we have now, uh, we just read. So what has happened as I read this is, you know, we, we just had Jesus talking to us. Uh, they're down through verse 21 and has talked about the, the light and, uh, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And comes down here and John now, has been brought, his disciples come to him and, the, and they say, hey, look, you know, what's the deal? Um, the one who you baptized is now baptizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's going on here? And, and so they have this conversation and, and John kind of puts him in his place. John says, I have my task and he has his. Mm -hmm. I told you I wasn't him. <laughs> and and yeah. what he receives and, and he kind of goes back in to emphasize there in the, in the latter few verses here, verse 31 on, he, he emphasizes that what he has is from God. The, this, and he, has, he is giving and teaching what he has received, and I am teaching and giving what I've received. And I'm anchored here on earth, and he actually is anchored in heaven. And that's kind of what I get from this when I read it, is that John is really kind of draw a distinction between him as an earthly guy mm -hmm. and uh, also Christ is, while earthly, something other. Right. So he is yeah. he himself now is, is <clears throat> doubling down on what he said before, which behold, the Son of Man who takes away the sin of the world. I mean, he is uh, the, the Son of God. So he is doubling down on this is the Messiah, this is the Christ. Hey, good morning, Lynn. Lynn watching this morning. Pastor Larry watching. Good to have you joining in watching. Uh, amen. Glad y'all are here. So, Ramona, give us some thoughts on this on this passage. Okay. Well, you know the Jews are always after it, aren't they? They, mm. the Pharisees. And when we say Jews in these contexts, these are the Jewish leaders. 
and um, they're hung up on the physical stuff. Mm -hmm. Always talking about purification of the body, always these rituals that they have to mm -hmm. keep themselves clean. I think Jesus said somewhere in the Gospels that <laughs> they're like uh, sepulchers, you know, they're, they're full of dead men's bones. Oh, on the outside, oh. they're pure white, but on the inside, forget it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so now the disciples are, are distraught because now they think, well, Jesus and his bunch are over there. And they're baptizing, and there are more people coming to them. They're, they're complaining to John, mm -hmm. saying they're very concerned because to them it was like a competition. And all of a sudden, more people are going to Jesus and his disciples than they are John. And so uh, they're very afraid that, um, th and they say everybody's going to him, which wasn't true. They exaggerate. You know, it's just <laughs> terrible, terrible. And, <laughs> and so, but they were afraid that John was losing his his grip and his audience, you know, because less more people will go into that. And John, you know, he he said, "I told you before, mm -hmm. you know, way back when, uh, in the beginning, when he introduced him, when he baptized him, and, and he got the the um, um, the confirmation from God mm -hmm. when he saw the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and, and God said, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased." And so John testified to them that he was not the Messiah, mm -hmm. that he had to come first. He was, and then he uses the, um, uh, he talks about uh, comparison to a, a, a bridegroom and the best man. Mm -hmm. And so he, he pictures, you know, here's, here's the, he is the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And John, as the best man, is delighted because he gets to prepare things for the wedding and, and yeah. you know, help us. And, and so he's delighted that, and, and so yeah. he makes this comparison. Yeah. And, um, well, and he says there in verse 29, the joy of mine is fulfilled. Is fulfilled, right. So and he, you know, it says this is before he was arrested. And so this is shortly before, yeah. you know, he, because he said, he must increase and I must decrease. Jesus becomes the one, the supreme position, not mm -hmm. John. Yeah. And John knew that, and that was his mission was to come before and to introduce the Savior to the world. And uh, so... Yeah. And I'm going to come back to that. When I, you know, I, I know what happens, but I'm going to come back to that when we get to that part of the story. Yeah. Um, and, and come back to these verses here where John's talking about that. Yeah. Uh, let's see, where are we? Okay, um, so back to the bridegroom, I see. Uh, we already talked about that. Um, okay. Then in verse 31, he references... Jesus again as he who comes from above mm -hmm. is over all and he who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way so he's he's comparison comparing Jesus and himself uh, and so if he comes from heaven above then the things that he speaks of are from above mm -hmm. and uh, and he is above all and, uh, he, and he says he bears witness to what he has seen and heard. You know, he's been in heaven and now he's come to spread the word. And uh, then this next one, and, there's a, and he says again, yet no one receives his testimony. Many people, and especially the Pharisees and all, they're just fighting against Mary step of the way. Yeah, and I'm going to ask a question here. Because yeah. as, as you're going back through this, and I'm, I'm kind of just listening and trying to put my fresh eyes on these things and, mm -hmm. and move, remove... Not all my preconceptions that I walk around with, but uh, you know what? You know, so his disciples come to him, and and they're, hey, he's taking all of our folks. We're going to be obsolete. Where's our, you know, we're not going to be relevant any longer with with him doing these things. And I almost is both not. It was a comparison between John and Jesus, but maybe almost a little bit of a rebuke to his disciples. Mm -hmm. And and he, you know, hey. Uh, I've got my mind on the heavenly and, things because that's Jesus. Well, that's true, yeah. And you guys are down here talking about earthly things. Who's baptizing more people? Right. Who, you know, who's got the bigger crowds? And and then I think, because part of that, you know, is, and no one receives his testimony, and maybe even a little bit of a, guys, where you were there and watched when I baptized mm -hmm. him, when we proclaimed, you saw the dove and heard, these guys probably saw the dove, heard the voice. They probably did. Yeah. And yet they're over here going, we be baptizing more people. It's like, do you guys think? You know, so, yeah. so I think sometimes, you know, maybe even 
it goes beyond the Pharisees. Maybe he even pulls it that John is trying to get his disciples to go, what? He's, come, come on, guys. They this, should be following. Yeah. You, <laughs> I should be alone here. Yeah. Like, I would have thought all my disciples right. would have been the would first been, ones to right. go. A, a few of them did. Yeah, and if, yeah, a but, few of them did, but the, the majority but, and, and is so, still there. So I think there's a little bit of that that maybe is going right. on here as well. <laughs> Yeah. Why are we having this conversation? <laughs> and, and he said, you know, he, he said of himself, John said, I proclaim the divine truth on earth, but he is from above mm -hmm. and he is over all. Yeah. Um, let's see, where are we? Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. And yeah. whoever receives his testimony, because he said many won't, yeah. but whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. Setting his seal, you said historical content. Okay, let me see. I, I kind of looked that up, say, well, what are they talking about here? Mm -hmm. And back in those days, uh, most people were uneducated as far as reading and writing. And so, but the seal, the seal was the confirmation, when they put a seal on uh, any kind of uh, document uh, documents or, or, or uh, transactions that they did, uh, they would put a seal, and that would say, that confirms it. So the people that accept him, they place his seal, in, in, as a, in other words, they know this to be true, uh, mm -hmm. and, and because they have accepted him for who he is. And, uh, and so, you know, they are, um, the seal indicated uh, and expressed a person's personal guarantee. This is the real deal, folks. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. I put my seal on this. Uh, and so Jesus' testimony is to certify that God is true regarding what he has sealed. Um, and verse 34, uh, I don't know if that's you or me, Buzzin. No, it's, it's me. It's my front oh, it's door. Yeah. Okay. Um, in verse 34, you find, and I don't know if it's anywhere else in the scriptures, where you find the Trinity in mm -hmm. one verse. And if you read that verse, oh, yeah. for whom, for he whom God has sent, utters the words of God, for he gives the spirit without measure. And so here you're talking about God, the Father, who gave Jesus, the Son, mm -hmm. and gives him the Holy Spirit unlimited, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so here you have the three persons God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one verse. And that struck me. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. But then we go on, and uh, when you get down here, and it says the Father loves the Son, has given all things in his hand. And then it echoes of three, uh, John 3, 16, again. Yeah, yeah again. you get that. Yeah. yeah, this is Jesus said it, now John's repeating Now John it. is repeating, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, and whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God remains on him. And we talked earlier, way back when we were first starting in this mm -hmm. chapter, about, uh, you know, God doesn't send anyone to hell. Yeah. It's our decision. We make the decision to follow Jesus or just turn away. Yeah, and, you know, that, and that's, that's such an important, you know, and I think that's a lot of, people have a lot of issue with our, what I would call our five-point Calvin brothers and sisters. And I'm emphasizing calling them brothers and sisters. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the issue they have is they place all the responsibility of the ultimate response going with God declaring others are going to go, go to hell. Yeah. And, that's, and that is one of some of the problems with the tenets of a five-point Calvinist mm -hmm. is limited atonement uh, in, in, that, in, that, in that regard. But what we see here that John is actually telling us, and, and what we got to get in the right mind, at the fall, sin entered, and death is a result. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this on Sunday in the sermon, but God made a way. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, we believe in unlimited atonement, that everyone will turn. And now it makes sense. God desires that none should perish. Yeah. God desires that no one goes. And so he did everything and all that he would ever need to do on the cross, yeah. that we might have eternal life. And now it is simply our decision. Will we receive what he has done and acknowledge who he is, or will we not? So he's not sending it. He, he's no. not sending. It is, he's made a way. 
And we should emphasize, and I, not that we should never preach on hell or sin and things like that, but we should have, God made a way. If you don't end a sermon on hellfire and brimstone with the joyous salvation right. that God offers to us freely, then you're, you're, you're really not preaching the full gospel. The gift and, was set before us, yeah. and, we and so we have, have the that. choice. We can either accept it yeah. or say, nah, I Is like it, things the way He who it. believes. He it, who believes. You know, whosoever. My wife wears those t-shirts. You know, I'm a whosoever. You know, whosoever yeah. believes in him. But and even that's then, what we have. you know, you've got, there, there's another scripture. And I, I don't have the reference, so you guys know what it is. Where it says um, that even the devils believe and tremble. Mm. So you can believe, you can know, or believe, yeah, he is, but psh, you can still reject him, yeah. right? Belief is more than just saying, yeah, I think that's probably true. He probably was the son of God. I don't know. But then uh, true belief is that? putting believing your in, trust in Believing unto salvation unto is kind of a phrase I like, I like to that's use that That's a good phrase, phrase. yeah. And it's you believe mine. and you accept him with all your heart. And, and you obey and you follow him. Yeah. That's the true belief well, you, that he's talking about. You begin to love him. And this is yeah. where it goes back to how you understand our thoughts around love. I begin to, I recognize his great love for me. And so I love him in return. Yeah. And, and I think that is where a lot of, you know, relationship struggle you know here here on earth is because we don't love as god loved as he desires for us to love one another and that was you know his last command to his disciples was hey this you know love one another his desire was they would love one another in such a manner that other people would see that and want to be brought into that fellowship mm -hmm. and and then learn that that love doesn't come from them it comes from god and that's that's a beautiful thing so anyway yes yeah so there, there you have um, uh, any other thoughts on that? I, you know, like I said, I, I'm going to come back to, you know, as I read this with the eyes, right, that I've, I don't know what's happening. Right. I, I wonder, verse 24 is, is that verse, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Oh, you're coming back to John. I'm, I'm going to yeah. come back to John here because, you know, yeah. so, so I've got John. this, you know, just as much as I had that hint uh, of Christ rising from the dead back in chapter two, mm -hmm. you know we had that little. Yeah. You know, if you're Whoa, reading, a, if you're reading a novel, a page turner, <laughs> you suddenly yeah. have got this guy in there and they're talking he's, about it. And next thing you go, but he's going to die. What? Yeah. What? What is this? To come um, back to there, you know that verse. I think it's verse twenty. Let me see. Verse twenty. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, right. they just tossed that out there. They toss it out. Like that said, like we all know. <laughs> but if I'm reading John for the first time. John two twenty two, I get that one, and then over here, you know, three twenty four, another page turner. John had not yet been thrown into prison. What, what, what's that all about? What is this about? And what's what's going to happen mm -hmm. to John? So now I've got what happens. To Jesus. They're going to kill Jesus. He's going to rise from the dead, and now John's going to prison. Wow, this is a page turner, and you just want to, you know. Right. Well, you're not I think somebody... get it in the book of John, though. They just say this is before he went to prison. Well, why did he go to prison? Yeah. You want me to tell you? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Right. We, we, yeah, we, yeah. We, <laughs> I know the well, story, but we're we're, we're good well, on time. You're, so. you're a dummy, yeah. though. I mean, you've never heard the story. Before, That's right. right? I'm not. Yeah. You're so, to be, so yes, yeah, so I want to know what. Yeah. It, so I'm not going to find out. Unless in the book you of saw John. the movie, then Let's you should the know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but John was not shy mm -hmm. about pointing out people's sin and why they needed to repent, mm -hmm. repent, repent, repent. And he said it to the wrong people mm. because Herod, the ruler, mm -hmm. had taken his brother's wife, Philip's wife, to himself. Mm -hmm. And so John was condemning them. You have taken your sister's wife and this is sin and you need to repent. And he just was, whenever he got an earshot of them, he would throw their sin before them. Uh -huh. And so... Um, so he was arrested because they Herod and them, they had enough. So they threw him in prison. And uh, during that time that he was in prison, they had some kind of a festival or a party or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a birthday, I can't remember. But uh, they're having this uh, party. And so um, his, uh, I won't say his wife, but his brother's wife, her, her daughter was dancing. Mm -hmm. She was part of the entertainment. And so it pleased Herod so much that it must have been a fantastic dance. Mm -hmm. And he loved it. He said, tell me whatever you want is yours. So she, 
Yeah. Up, up to half. Uh, up into uh, half. Is up king. into half yeah. of up, my kingdom. Up into half of his kingdom. Quite the dance. So she conferred with her mom and said, yep. "What should I ask for?" And she said, "Ask for the head of John the Baptist on a silver tray." Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So she did. She told Herod what she wanted, and he, you know, supposedly being a man of his word, you know, I guess there's honor even among thieves. Yeah. And so. <laughs> He, he, he didn't like that request, but he fulfilled it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I think her name was Herodias. I don't Herodias, know. Herodias, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so, um, the order was given. John was beheaded. His head was put on a silver track, plat, platter. Platter, yeah. I want their head and on a silver platter. Hey, where's that <laughs> phrase come from? Yeah. I presented... <laughs> to um, Herodias, I guess, who gave it to no, her mother. Yeah. But anyway, um, and I wondered, since they named her Herodias, was she the 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 daughter of Herod? You think? I'd have to go look. Because they were, you know, he yeah. had taken who, his yeah, brother's Yeah, who knows one. how, yeah. I mean, I don't know. But anyhow, that's, the, that's how that. John died. And you can read about it in Matthew. Yeah. yeah, you don't get this. You don't get that in, in story John. in John. You yeah. know, he and just that mentioned, is, you know. Yeah, and that's, but you know, that's, he, Again, that's and, and I, I think why a lot of you know folks, you know, a, again, still for the new reader, there's a difference between John the disciple whom Jesus loved, who wrote this testament, mm -hmm. and John the Baptist, right? Mm -hmm. So there's still that that comes into play when one is reading yeah, this this like, this, whoa, this book. Um, I read some uh, my my. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll say uh, just a little side here. Is, call this a commercial break. Okay. Um, <laughs> my son sent me for Easter a little cartoon, and um, it's a conversation between uh, John and Peter. And John says, "Is he raced towards the tomb? I, I win." <laughs> and 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 Peter says, it, "It it it wasn't a race." And John says, well, "Yes, it was." And Peter says, "Well, it doesn't matter. No one will ever know." And John says, oh, everyone will know. So, <laughs> so I, 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 that, that, you know, we're, we're in the book of John here. That's and I just think about that. Oh, yeah. Who sent you that? Was that Andrew? Joe. Oh, Joe, Joe. Sent that. Joe sends me things like that. Yeah, and, um, that's cool. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was, you know, because I, you th we, I, I always think about it. I try oh, to think about did. disciples as guys, right? <laughs> you know, it wasn't a race. You know, but anyway. Uh, um, all right. Yeah. Uh, let's. Let, we got a couple things here. Uh, Lynn, we're gonna pray for you afterwards. Absolutely, really bad pain in her legs. We're, we'll pray for you at the end of our time here together today. Um, Karen's already praying. Stan's uh, um, uh, praying for joy. Uh, Stan is enjoying things this morning. Good deal. Yeah. All right. Glad you are. We we, we just we just try to love the Lord and and and, and just mm -hmm. share these things. We're, we're just trying to get some. I think too often in our devotional lives. In, in, in really just our lives in general, we're almost like the church in Revelation. There's one thing I have against you. You lost your first love. Yeah, that, that's the one that gets me. And, and, and I, you know, and, and I always say, I laugh, you know, now it no longer hangs out. I used to have the two pictures. I've said this before. I've had the two pictures of our wedding on my side of the bed. So when I flip out of the bed in the morning and, and 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 while I sit up, I don't flip out of the bed. When I sit up, I was trying to you know, picture. Yeah, yeah. When I can, <laughs> when I stagger towards upright, right? Yeah. Um, pictures of our, our, our wedding, mm -hmm. and uh, and that was there. And, and now the the kids, the daughter in laws, they they helped us hang some pictures up uh, a couple weeks ago. They took one of those and and moved it to a collage of pictures of our family now, mm -hmm. and uh, on one of our walls and. and very appreciative of that, but so it kind of moved, and so now I've got a picture replacing that one on the wall. They hung one from uh, Joe and Savannah's wedding, and so I've got the picture of us at our wedding and then at Joe and Savannah's wedding, and uh, and, and and the reminder of it is, you know, and, and Tanya's always tortured by, it. you know, I I am just as much as in love with her today as as I was back then, and and that is something that I work hard at, but not just because I think I should. Because I realize that that's one of the things in Scripture that I should never forget the love I have for people. Mm -hmm. my, my spouse, my kids, my, my church family, um, and, and protect and guard that love. 
in, the, in that case, because that is that's what binds us together uh, and, and really grounds us. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap here. We're gonna close with a word of prayer uh, again. We're rolling right around thirty minutes or so. We don't want to hog your whole day. Mm-hmm. It, we could though. We could sit in the oh, act. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're gonna chapter four now is is a bit long, but I think we're gonna try to motor through it next. I week. think we can get through and, it. Um, it's it, it's about the woman at the the Samaritan woman, and then yeah. the second miracle that John uh, documents documents here. And, and I, I think it's important for us to kind of get through all of chapter four. So we'll yeah. go a little quicker, maybe. Yeah. We'll, we'll do what we can. But I mean, we'll, like I said, we, we've gone as long as 45, 50 minutes. And I think that's, yeah. a, that's okay as well. I'm just warning you um, if you want to set aside some more time next week. Unless uh, God sends you yeah, a unless, wave. Unless Thursday is storm day. You know, normally, yeah. I've always said, you know, down here in the south, the, many yeah. of us know all these big storms love Wednesdays. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and um, so we're, we're always mindful of that. But anyway, uh, let's close with prayer. Normally, we just kind of say goodbye to you. But let's, let's close with prayer today. I'm going to... I'll give Ramona a break off screen here if I can push the right buttons. There she goes. And um, uh, we'll close the prayer today. And, and then, uh, um, again, wish you the best of the remainder of your week. Um, if you have not um, watched the Easter service or if you missed some of the singing and, and preaching from Shannon, he preached and sang to us. He did. Um, he, yeah. he's, a, he's a minister. And, uh, and we thoroughly enjoyed uh, him being with us. And uh, every time he's been here, we've thoroughly enjoyed him. And that was the first time we had an opportunity to have him uh, on a morning with us. Normally it's an evening, but uh, just was a fantastic uh, service. And it really was because we were all anchored in desiring to praise our Savior. Yeah. For he is I'm so risen. grateful because I, I really didn't think I was planning on coming. But I was having such a bad week, and I said, I don't know how I can go and, and get there. And then when Beverly said, well, I want to go too, so you go with me and I'll help you up the ramp and we'll get you there. And uh, I'm so grateful that she did that. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful service, a beautiful Easter service. So. Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. We'll pray for, uh, for Lynn today. And um, I tell you, if you're on Facebook, man, one of your highlights should go see um, uh, Edna and little Levi's pictures. Um, oh. Edna got to, to see Levi down at Tanny Hill and, what a beautiful and, giant. and, oh, and that goodness. just was, I uh, it, it, it made, made my day seeing those when they posted those in the weekend. But anyway, all right. Uh, we had the babies, babies everywhere. And I don't know if you realize this. Um, we were blessed and fortunate. Um, uh, Hannah and, and Davey and, and little Cora and the rest of the family, mm. they live up in Hayden, but they were there here Sunday. Mm. And that was actually Cora's first church service was here in this church. Wonderful. And so mm-hmm. that was a, a privilege and a blessing to have her with us uh, on, on Easter Sunday. And, and just, just fantastic. You know the prayers that have been answered with, with her. Amen. And, uh, and God is just so faithful to mm-hmm. us. So let's, let's pray. That same faithful God is going to take care of you, Lynn, uh, and all of the rest of our needs that we have. If you'll just bring them to the Lord and confess them to him, he is faithful to hear our cries. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all your blessings. We thank you for your beautiful words in Scripture, your reminders of who you are to us. And we just pause in our day today to lift Lynn up before you, Lord, that you would touch her. We think of Karen's testimony in this time together this morning of your touch upon her life, her physical life, Lord, uh, strengthening her on Sunday morning. And so that's that same cries that she had for you and that same desire she had for you, that is the same desire Lynn has, God, and you are the same God and you hear our prayers. And so we just claim today that you would touch her, uh, touch her legs, God, and watch over her and protect her. We pray for all of those folks that are in need of prayer, God. We thank you for bringing joy uh, through surgery, bringing yes, Lou through surgery. You, and we just pray, God, you continue to be with all these folks as they recover. Lord, we thank you for bringing Jason through surgery. A lot of folks Tuesday with big surgery day for us. So we yes. pray, God, you keep your hand upon folks and you help us to continue to be faithful in our prayer time and lifting them up and keeping them strengthened and encouraged in the spirit as we go through our days. And we ask, God, that you just uh, be with all those watching. Uh, may you bless their homes and abide with them and give them a, a wonderful, wonderful continuing the rest of this day and week. And we just give you praise, honor, and glory for you are the only one worthy. Yes. And it is in that wonderful matchless name of Jesus who is our risen Lord and Savior. We ask all these things. Amen. 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 All right. Well, as always, <clears throat> most importantly, God loves you. So do we. If we can do anything, reach out to us. Have a wonderful, blessed remainder of the day. Take care.